Humans love to come up with plans. Humans, however, are not the only things that act. In this episode, we'll talk about actants, things beyond just us humans that affect what goes on in this world. When we are trying to manage and solve pressing social and environmental problems, it can be hard to deal with the fact that people have different desires for the future and different opinions of how the world should be run. What is even harder, though, is that when we try to govern and manage our societies and environments, we have to realize that what goes on in this world is not fully up to us humans. Other things have agency, too, and they also create structures that we humans have to figure out how to live with. Usually, when we are talking about humans affecting a situation, we use the term actors. But social scientists sometimes refer to things which affect us that could be human or non-human using the term actants. So, what kinds of things are actants? Well, all sorts of things. But in this video, we'll just look at two examples, mosquitoes and a river. First, let's think about the example of mosquitoes. These little buggers can have effects by swarming you and ruining your camping trip or backyard barbecue. They also, however, can dictate everything from where we put our cities to how we have to manage standing water and vegetation. This is true not just because they are a nuisance when they make us itch, but because of all the different human diseases that they carry. So let's say that we want to live in a big city on a tropical coast, or keep bowls full of standing water around for our pets, but we'd like to do all that without getting ill. Well, mosquitoes, because of their own needs to drink blood and reproduce, as well as the fact that their bodies make great habitats for certain stages of malaria, as well as viruses that cause things like dengue fever, yellow fever, Zika, and West Nile, well, that's gonna make it a little hard for us to do that. Now, this isn't because mosquitoes hate us, they are just responding to their own needs and drives for survival. These drives, however, seriously impact both our health as well as any plans we might have about how we want to manage the environments around our houses. These acts of mosquito agency become the structures that we humans have to deal with, and us humans have undertaken many, many projects to deal with the effects of these mosquito desires, from establishing cities at higher elevations where mosquitoes can't live, to spraying poisons all over our towns, to altering huge expanses of vegetation to deny them breeding sites. In these ways, mosquitoes are actants that make us adopt our plans to them. An actant, however, might even be a non-living entity. A river itself could be an actant. Humans seem to like living by rivers. These areas tend to be flatter than surrounding terrain. They have good soils left from flood deposits. They have an ample supply of available water for agriculture. The river itself may be a great uh, vehicle for travel and trade. And they are habitats for fish and other things that we like to eat. In fact, when you go back into the history of where humans first started establishing what we might call cities, many of these were on the banks of rivers. Rivers, however, are not static entities. In addition to the old adage that you can't step into the same river twice, since it is, by definition, a body of water always in motion, there are the facts that the volume of water is always changing. The river is constantly shifting course, sometimes eroding its edges and sometimes building islands by depositing sediment. And of course, during floods, it will regularly overflow its banks and leave behind rich deposits of soil the fertility of which may be what attracted people to the site in the first place. So, whether we are talking about mosquitoes, rivers, or volcanoes, earthquakes, swarms of locusts, or even the microbiome inside your very own body, we have to recognize that these non-human actants have big effects on what we humans can and cannot do. Even though much of our culture's focus these days has been on the ways that human activities alter the natural world, we have to remember that the natural world is not static at all. 
Our environments are quite dynamic, but our systems of governance tend to be pretty bad at recognizing this fact. The mistaken belief that nature never changes may lead us to try and freeze a shifting landscape into one state that we humans think is best, like preserving a landscape based on its state in some arbitrary past year, or it may lead us to build our cities as if the river next to it should never flood, and then we end up spending billions to protect infrastructure and individual plots of private property, which, according to natural cycles, have long been spaces that are periodically underwater. So, if we really want to effectively manage and govern landscapes as the shifting entities that they actually are, then we need to give up on the idea that the non-human world is a static thing that we can control. Instead, we have to recognize that the world is a dynamic place with non-human actants. If we recognize this, we'll realize that the art of effective governance needs to be based not on greater techniques to control the world, but learning how to harmonize human projects with a world that is in constant change and which is much, much bigger than just us.